Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing an important piece of Harry Potter history that many of you may not know about. What is it exactly? Oh, only a Harry Potter prequel written by JK Rowling herself. In 2008, JK Rowling, along with 12 other authors, were invited by UK bookseller Waterstones to contribute handwritten cards to a charity auction named What's Your Story? The purpose of the auction was to raise money for sufferers of dyslexia, and the way that the money was meant to be raised was through selling custom story cards, written by each author that was invited. Originally, Waterstones just expected the authors to write a small blurb, nothing major. However, Rowling took it to the next level, and ended up writing a short but very legitimate Harry Potter prequel. The cards from the 13 participating authors, which included Rowling's, were auctioned on the 10th of June 2008 and raised a total of £47,150. However, Rowling's card was responsible for a whopping 25000 of this, selling for more than all of the other cards combined. In the end, a Tokyo-based investment banker ended up buying the original prequel, written by Rowling on the card. I'm going to share the prequel with you guys. But first, let's hear what Rowling had to say about the whole ordeal. A few months ago, a number of authors were invited to handwrite cards for auction by Waterstones on June 10th. All proceeds to go to English Pen, the Writers Association, and the Dyslexia Action. After playing around with a number of different ideas, I decided to write a short, for me, excerpt from a prequel to the Potter series. It is about 800 words long, and the action takes place around three years before Harry is born. Although I did feel a bit like a relapsing addict as I sat down to write, the words poured from my pen with frightening ease. According to Rowling's comments, the prequel takes place around three years before Harry was born, which would make it set in the year 1977, the same year that James Potter, Sirius Black, and the other Marauders were attending their seventh year at Hogwarts. For this reason, the untitled prequel has been aptly named the James and Sirius prequel, it's also known as the Marauders prequel. Without further ado, let's get into it. The speeding motorcycle took the sharp corner so fast in the darkness that both policemen in the pursuing car shouted, Whoa! Sergeant Fisher slammed his large foot on the brake, thinking that the boy who was riding Pillion was sure to be flung under his wheels. However, the motorbike made the turn without unseating either of its riders, and with a wink of its red taillight, vanished up the narrow side street. We've got him now, cried PC Anderson excitedly. That's a dead end. Leaning hard on the steering wheel and crashing his gears, Fisher scraped half the paint off the flank of the car as he forced it up the alleyway in pursuit. There, in the headlights, sat their quarry, stationary at last after a quarter of an hour's chase. The two riders were trapped between a towering brick wall and the police car, which was now crashing towards them like some growling, luminous-eyed predator. There was so little space between the car doors and the walls of the alley that Fisher and Anderson had difficulty extricating themselves from the vehicle. It injured their dignity to have to inch, crab-like, towards the miscreants. Fisher dragged his generous belly along the wall, tearing buttons off his shirt as he went, and finally snapping off the wing mirror with his backside. Get off the bike, he bellowed the smirking youths, who sat basking in the flashing blue light as though enjoying it. They did as they were told. Finally pulling free from the broken wind mirror, Fisher glared at them. They seemed to be in their late teens. The one who had been driving had long black hair. His insolent good looks reminded Fisher unpleasantly of his daughter's guitar playing layabout boyfriend. The second boy also had black hair, though his was short and stuck up in all directions. He wore glasses and a broad grin. Both were dressed in t-shirts, emblazoned with a large golden bird. The emblem, no doubt, of some deafening, tuneless rock band. No helmets, Fisher yelled, pointing from one uncovered head to the other, exceeding the speed limit by… by a considerable amount. In fact, the speed registered had been greater than Fisher was prepared to accept that any motorcycle could travel, failing to stop for the police. We'd have loved to stop for a chat, said the boy in glasses, only we were trying… Don't get smart, you two are in a heap of trouble, snarled Anderson. Names. Names? repeated the long-haired driver. Uh, well, let's see. There's Wilberforce, Bathsheba, Elvendork, and what's nice about that one is you can use it for a boy or a girl, said the boy in glasses. 
Oh, our names, did you mean? Asked the first, as Anderson spluttered with rage. You should have said, this here is James Potter, and I'm Sirius Black. Things will be seriously back for you in a minute, you cheeky little. But neither James nor Sirius was paying attention. They were suddenly as alert as gun dogs, staring past Fisher and Anderson, over the roof of the police car, at the dark mouth of the alley. Then, with identical fluid movements, they reached into their back pockets. For the space of a heartbeat, both policemen imagined guns gleaming at them, but a second later, they saw that the motorcyclists had drawn nothing more than drumsticks, jeered Anderson. Right pair of jokers, aren't you? Right, we're arresting you on a charge of… But Anderson never got to name the charge. James and Sirius had shouted something incomprehensible, and the beams from the headlights had moved. The policeman wheeled around, then staggered backwards. Three men were flying, actually flying, up the alley on broomsticks, and at the same moment, the police car was rearing up on its back wheels. Fisher's knees bucked. He sat down hard. Anderson tripped over Fisher's legs and fell on top of him. As flump, bang, crunch, they heard the men on brooms slam into the upended car and fall, apparently insensible to the ground, while broken bits of broomstick clattered down around them. The motorbike had roared into life again. His mouth hanging open, Fisher mustered the strength to look back at the two teenagers. Thanks very much, called Sirius of the throb of the engine. We owe you one. Yeah, nice meeting you, said James. And don't forget, Elvendork. It's unisex. There was an earth-shattering crash, and Fisher and Anderson threw their arms around each other in fright. Their car had just fallen back to the ground. Now it was the motorcycle's turn to rear. Before the policeman's disbelieving eyes, it took off into the air. James and Sirius zoomed away into the night sky, their taillight twinkling behind them like a vanishing ruby. From the prequel I am not working on, but that was fun. J.K. Rowling, 2008 The synopsis of the above passage, in essence, is this. Two muggle policemen chase a speeding motorbike ridden by Sirius Black and James Potter. When the policemen corner them, they confront the pair, and it's at this point that three men fly down the alley on broomsticks. James and Sirius magically upend the policeman's car, and the broomsticks crash into it, rendering their riders insensible. As the policemen clutch at each other in fear, Sirius and James return to their motorbike, which then flies away. Pretty interesting and important piece of Harry Potter history, if you ask me. I should also mention that the handwritten story card containing the prequel was actually later stolen during a burglary carried out in Birmingham in 2017. To this day, the location of the stolen manuscript is not known, but I do certainly hope it shows up one day. And that's it for this video. Did you know about this prequel? Comment down below. Until next time, remember, time will not slow down when something unpleasant lies ahead.